G'day everyone, Greg Russ with you for another edition of the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. Delighted to be rejoined. He was with us uh, a couple of episodes ago now when we chatted about the Bathurst Wildcards by newly inducted Hall of Fame member Craig Lowndes. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It was actually a huge surprise because not that you ever think about you want to be in it, but it's actually interesting since post the gala and everything else, there's a lot of people saying, I already thought you were in it. So, and, and, and to be honest from, um, what I've heard, like they, even some of the, you know, powers to be thought I was already in it. So, um, but a little bit of an oversight on that, but yeah, it's, it's really nice to be, um, sort of in, in, uh, seen in my career and what I've done and how I've given back as something that's valuable enough to be in part of that all the time in an amazing group of people the company you're in in that that uh well i'm now number 25 so tim shankin and i got inducted at the same time so tim was 24 i'm 25 so to know there's only 25 people in in the history of of what supercar holds if yep. um is really special and even beyond that i mean some of the legends of the game in, in australian touring car racing amazing mate um what does that mean in your incredible career and all the things that you've achieved? I mean, I, I think for the industry, for the business to recognise you in that way, um, it, it must make you look back on it and go far out, you know? It is. And I actually said on my speech to the night, like when you start off and I started in go-karts, you never know how far or how long you're going to be in the sport because you just don't know what your path's going to be. And I actually described it. My career is almost like being a race strategy. You try to be in the right team at the right time in the right place. It's never that easy, mm. but you try and pick and choose where you want to be, when the teams are performing. And I've been really thankful that I think we've made probably 90% the right choices. There's a couple we haven't, but to be in the HRT at that time, in that era with Thomas Mazira, Brock, uh, Brad Jones, when we went to Bathurst in 94, uh, to have Brock as such an instrumental part of my baseline of my foundation of how I got into the sport and how he and you know um you know how he conducts himself with fans how he interacts with fans good bad or ugly on track they don't care and I think some of the drivers actually sort of don't see that and I think that they just I know they wear their their pride on their sleeve but sometimes you know to be honest you know you got to take all that away and say well the fans have paid good money to come in to have an interaction a signed photo or whatever else that for me has been installed into me since the start with Brock. So hopefully we can sort of give that a little bit to like even Declan Fraser, who we did the wild card with, uh, you know, just to install some of that in, into these next generations to, to be able to embrace it. Cause we need to have those next generation have that sort of emph emphasis of what sport is. Wins for both marks in the sport, in both Falcon and Commodore, which are, you know, as the game is concerned, no, no longer. Um, it, the extension to your answer there is that, that obviously, you, you know, uh, a, a great, um, chapter with triple eight as they emerged in the sport as well i mean there's so much to kind of look back on isn't it well it, it's amazing and and to be honest we got told on sunday night that uh, we'd be inducted so it wasn't a, a huge surprise but it was a it, for me it was a big surprise with the audience and the people that were there as their support like all standing and mm. applauding as i got up and and then i started writing out sunday night like teams i've been with people i've, I've dealt with you know mechanics dri truck drivers you know engineers all that and I say, I got up in the end, I said, I said to Lara, my wife, I said, I'm just going to have to get up and say, I'll be here all night. Because it's going to take me a list this long. And everybody. And I should have got up, actually, now I'm thinking about it, I should have got up like a toilet roll and just rolled it out of the thing. I'm like, hang on, let me start. Uh, but I literally, uh, I thanked HRT because if it wasn't for Jeff Gretsch picking up the phone back, way back then in 94 to invite me to Calder Park to be part of their test program, uh, Thomas Mazira and Peter Brock were the main drivers. I got to, to do a little cameo piece sort of the end of the day, but that's what started my career. Mm. So that for me was really special. And as you mentioned, Triple Eight, I've been with the team now over 15 years. Mm. Um, and Roland Dane, I remember Roland Dane picking up the phone saying, oh, we want to have a chat. And it was the easiest decision to move because he literally goes, I'm going to pay you that. I want that. Okay, done. Where do I sign? It was si almost as simple as that. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Wish it was always like that, but it never is. But, you know, to have those 15 years with, with Triple Eight, and we've shared a lot of success along the way. You have, as you said, in the, in the wildcard edition of the, the show, um, a, a continuation of contract with them. You're still within the Triple Eight family framework. You've been off doing some, um, some media as well. What's the, the next phase hold for Craig Lowndes? 
Uh, I still love the driving and people actually ask me, like, do you miss it? And, and, and my answer is always miss the driving element, mm -hmm. the pressure of qualifying. Uh, and I think I said in that episode, like you know, Murph was, you know, heckling me about, because I had to qualify the car in the worst conditions of Bathurst. So that pressure is enormous on drivers. Mm. And if you get it wrong, you look like a dud. Team get in onto you, you know, you're down on yourself. So for me, I still love the driving aspect. Um, so I always do that. And hopefully we can do some more, you know, you know, 12 hour, um, you know, Bathurst wildcard or, you know, in the main game next year. So all that's still there. Uh, I'd love to do some other things. And, and to be honest, since I've semi-retired, I've been lucky enough to drive more Formula One cars than I ever have. And I always wanted to get there um, because we've been to Adelaide. You do the festival and everything over there. And there's so many beautiful cars in South Australia. Mm. And a good friend of ours has got a couple of old Formula Ones. I recently drove uh, an Arrows Footwork 94 car, which actually raced at Adelaide in 94. Fantastic. So to drive some old cars like that, that's the buzz I love now getting. Is there, you um, perhaps didn't conclude, what, what are you thinking like, Le Mans, Nürburgring, 24-hour, are there things like that? Or is it more about that historical element you, you're chatting about? Uh, all of that. I still would love to do Le Mans. That's the one race that's always eluded me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We've had opportunities, clash of dates, things go on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I would still love to do. And and, and look, to be honest, um, you know, I'd love to do it in a, in a prototype car, but most likely going to be in a, in a GT car mm -hmm. because that's what I know. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I still love to do that. Nurburg, 24 hour. I had, again, I had an opportunity many, many, many years to go over and do a VLN race with, with Luffy. Unfortunately, we, we didn't finish. So that was great. I've done the Spa 24 hour. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, you either love or hate them. Mm -hmm. You have no sleep in probably, it's more than 24 hours. Yeah. By the time you get up, you do the race, you never sleep. Yeah. It's yeah. a long, <laughs> but I loved it. I really did love it. And uh, so to have an opportunity to do that side of it, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely put my hand up. In 94, as you reflected a moment ago, you had that support of Jeff Gregg and, and then, you know, Peter Brock in your corner and so on. Now you're here and able to see the emergence of drivers like a Declan Fraser. Having spent that time with him at Bathurst, having seen him win the Super 2 crown, what are, what are your observations of him? Um, Jamie's talked about him really immersing himself in the team. What sort of potential has he got? Height, like, there's no doubt. And, and, and people ask me, like, how do you know or tell a good driver? Um, there's lots of elements. The driving part of it is just one part. Like winning races, that's great. But his, his attitude, the way he gets over things really quickly, uh, he listens, he learns, um, and he's constantly, as you mentioned, uh, developing himself within the team. So he, this this year he's been to every racetrack on his own. Uh, he sits in pre-briefs, debriefs because he wants to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, so his dedication is there. His ability as a race driver has always been there, but it's all about the other elements. And and I've got to say, through the Bathurst Wildcard Program, his interaction with fans, um, it actually reminded me a little bit of me. Uh, so he's just really uh, friendly. He looks at the people. It's not like just, thanks, thanks. It's like he engages in them. Um, so that, for me, was a bit of an eye-opener for his personality. His parents are beautiful. They're from Mackay, so it's a really grounding He's got a crazy sister. Um, <laughs> she's lovable. Up, she's loud. Um, so it's almost like chalk and cheese with Declan. He's sort of more of the shy one. And I remember when but he's we, come out of his shell a bit. He's coming more out of his shell, which is good. I remember doing the driver pride at Bathurst, and it was raining, but umbrellas were standing in the car, and we're driving through, and there's uh, streets alive with people. And he's like, "What do I do?" I'm like, "Wave, wave, you idiot!" <laughs> like this is this is the moment you'll look back on. And you'll Thunder. think, how good was that to be able to do a driver parade with all these people, you know, cheering you on? And and regardless of whatever happened on track, they're the things that I'm trying to get him to learn about. A couple to finish here. Um, your time in the media, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. You'll correct me. I can't remember exactly what your words were in the in the acceptance speech for Hall of Fame. But you talked about, you know, driver being by nature and understandably yep. a, a, a selfish character. Now you're on the other side trying to garner their support for interviews and all sorts of things. What's that been like and, and how have you found it all? Well, yeah, actually, what I did say was that when, as a driver, you're selfish. And, and if you agree with your or disagree in the driver, you're selfish. You've got your helmet on. you got to be. Your own car, your own results, because you've got the team around you. But you only focus on that. And so then I said, yeah, when I swap from a steering wheel to a microphone, now I've got to deal with 25 other selfish, <laughs> arrogant <laughs> grumpy drivers that to try and kick you out oh i feel for you i'm sorry for what i ever did uh, but you know, it's been interesting because when i first swapped over to walk into a djr which was then team penske and i 
I felt uneasy because you go from a Red Bull Lampole team. You're the enemy walking in, aren't you? And, you, and it, I did, actually did notice, like, you know, they're doing all their spreadsheets and everything else, and they're sort of doing this. <laughs> yeah, what would you like? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not here to look at your spring rates, roll centers and all that. I just want to interview your, your, your cranky drivers because <laughs> generally I'm the one that gets... Anyway, but I think over the last couple of years that I've got now, I've got respect for the, from other teams to be able to walk in, get what I need, get out, don't linger, um, and, and also to be able to have a producer in your ear. And then again, I, I'm very, like, I'm at aura with how you do it. Get a producer in your ear going, oh, one more question. And I'm like, oh, shit, I've run out of questions. And quick, quick, think, 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 think. And then, you, of course, you're trying to engage who you're talking to, listening to their answer, not about to ask a question they've just answered. So all that mindset for me has been a real um, development of understanding. Good on you. To your credit, too, you've got to work with some great young broadcasters, the likes of Richard Crail, Matt Nolte, uh, Chad Nalon, who took, uh, took out the award, um, and they've loved doing that with you. So well, well done on, on that. Um, can we finish with an observation of, of 2023? We're in, we're in the new year now. We're eagerly awaiting, um, you know, everyone getting behind the wheel of these, of these Gen 3 machines. You've been through a couple of iterations of supercars. What do you think of the new chapter? And what do you think we're going to get in a racing sense? It's an excitement. Absolute excitement. I've described these cars as like the old VSV T days. Excellent. So when I, I did a lot of the engine development a couple of years ago, just you know forecasting where we'll go to drive and have an opportunity to drive the Gen 3 car last year in different circuits and everything else, it is, uh, and you've got to take a perspective, the current car or what was the current car has 400 kilos of downforce at 200 kilometers an hour. Gen 3s how many have 140 kilos of downforce. So it's more than le half less than what like, we've seen. So braking zones are going to be longer. Cars move around. The attitude of the car is going to walk and dance. So it's going to be a driver's car. It's going to be the Cam Waters, I reckon Brody Kostecki, Shane Van Gisberg, and those guys that like the cars to dance around a little bit and not be su sucked to the ground. So I'm really excited, really looking forward to what's going on and how teams get their head around how they get the best out of this car. Because, again, thinking back on the Clipsal, well, sorry, not Clipsal, Adelaide 500, yeah. flip, slip, um, like going through turn eight, you've got to lift. You can't drive them into there because you just get this big understeer. So, oh, okay, these are things that are very different to what they're currently. So, again, I'll be very interested to see how that, especially the, the Will Browns, the junior, like the, the current drivers that, that haven't gone through that era. Yep. How they adapt. Adapt into yeah. the new one. Lots of great stories to look forward to in that regard. Um, if you didn't catch the episode that we did with the wild cards, um, you did talk about the fact and remind people that you are contracted into the the triple eight framework we don't know where you're going to end up for the enduros but i think one thing is certain Sandown and bathurst you whether it's wild card or whatever you're going to be there i'm excited about the Sandown because i think that we lost a bit of an element of the jewel and that was what i grew up with the the, the lead in the grand final the five hundred thousand. and i think that it and again again media hat on because it's it's great i can put that hat or that hat um i think bathurst will be more intense now because we'll get through the problems of teams in the 500 mm -hmm. and they will go to Bathurst well prepared, like instead of last year where you literally had that one showing. So I'm excited. Awesome. It still seems like yesterday this bloke was a little tacker with Brad Jones at Mount Panorama. Now you are a Hall of Famer. Congratulations on everything you've achieved. Thank you for spending some time with us here over summer and all the very best for 2023. Thank you. There he is, a proper legend, Craig Lowndes. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the KTM Summer Grill. And we will have another... Very special guest coming your way tomorrow. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder, and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage, or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.